Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm gonna get my Yammer live stream started as well here, and then um, we'll get going to talk about Microsoft Whiteboard. So there was a huge announcement today that Microsoft released a ton of um, major updates to Microsoft Whiteboard that we've been waiting for for a long time. And uh, I've thought maybe the easiest way to go through all of this would be to just talk about it and uh, show off each of the items one by one out of the blog post because this is one of the very rare instances where we actually have um, the feature launching the day that they announced it. Um, that almost never happens with Microsoft stuff. Usually Microsoft marketing will say things like, you know, now you can do such and such, but in reality, it's on the roadmap for like three months from now, you know, um, something about like their their product release people and their marketing people like, you know, aren't in sync. So they, uh, they tend to announce something and then it's not actually available, but this one actually is. So I thought we would just talk about it, show off some of the features. And then, um, you guys can ask questions if you want in the chat, uh, just drop a comment in the chat, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitter or, um, on Yammer going live to a Yammer community as well right now. Um, <clears throat> so while I'm kind of getting things situated here, let's go ahead and I'm going to turn on the chat overlay and drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching from, uh, from somewhere outside of Kansas City, I'm in Kansas City right now or just a little bit north of there. So um, let me know uh, where you're watching from or what you're excited to see about whiteboard today and we're going to check it out together and just kind of unpack some of these features here. So let me make sure this is working right over on the Yammer side here real quick. Okay. I, I feel like that sounds pretty good and looks pretty good over on Yammer. So we got somebody watching from Germany. Um, there's nobody on the chat in Yammer. We got Daryl in New Zealand. What time is it over there, Daryl? Let me let me see here. Let's see what time it is for Daryl. He's always like up super early. Seven o'clock in the morning. That's not too bad, man. I had a meeting I had to be up for um, that just in case something went wrong, they were gonna let me know. So I was watching um, I was watching from from bed. I woke up with my my three-year-old had a fever all night last night. So I've been up since like three o'clock in the morning. Um, he was running like 102 fever, which is pretty high. Um, and we were looking, trying to find a COVID test for him. And we kept the kids home from school uh, just as a precaution and went and got him a test this morning. And uh, fortunately he came back negative so far. So, um, and lo and behold, his fever is broken now. and <laughs> He's normal temperature. So he was acting fine. He just had a fever, you know, and being three years old, maybe he's hitting a growth spurt or something like that, but can't be too careful. All right. So we are ready to go. Let's, um, let's bring up my screen here real quick and talk about the blog post. So I follow Ian on Twitter and he mentioned, Hey, you know, here's an exciting announcement. And I kind of figured something was coming because, um, Jeff Teeper announced on like Sunday or Saturday on Twitter. He was like, Hey, we've got really awesome announcements. I can't wait for next week. It's going to be great. And Ian, um, quote tweeted him and was like, I'm excited too. So I figured something was happening with whiteboard and it kind of sounds like a lot of different things are rolling out. They've talked about phone stuff, um, whiteboarding, uh, content cameras apparently rolling out. I want to check and see if I have that. So thanks Daryl for, uh, for thinking about, about my son. I appreciate it. Um, we've got, we're, we're a little bit nervous about COVID cause, uh, my, my daughter is immunocompromised. Uh, she takes Humira shots that kind of knock down her immune system. So, um, you know, we've been extra careful this whole time and just hoping we can avoid it before, uh, before the vaccines come available for kids. Um, 
So I kind of knew something was coming with whiteboard. I was really excited and looking forward to it. And then um, they dropped this and I'm going to scroll through this without stopping too much, but look how long this thing is. There is so much, all of this stuff is out today that is listed here. And we just keep scrolling, scrolling, object alignment, you know, layering, bringing that stuff to the front. Then we got something coming next month. So like everything above that was today on the web, uh, Teams and Android, which is probably the most used like Microsoft Teams meetings, probably the most used uh, place for whiteboard. Then Windows and iOS, this stuff is coming for the native apps for iOS and Windows next month. Then down here, there's, you know, a few more things coming. Then they hit later this year. That's when we get like collaborative cursors, uh, the laser pointer, some of those types of things. So I want to go through all of these uh, options, but dude, it's like what? 80% launched today and maybe 20% is left uh, for the rest of the year. So this is probably a good time to talk about this stuff and, uh, and, and start showing it off. So we're going to uh, do some, some demoing here and just start looking at what we can do and uh, how the features work, where the buttons are. So <clears throat> it's available today, web, Microsoft Teams, and Android. I don't have an Android device, so I, I can't show that off, but we'll certainly show the web and Teams. And overall, the first thing they talk about is it's just a modern look and feel to this. Um, it's it's updated, the buttons have modern uh, icons, there's a lot more functionality. So let's start out by talking about how we can get to a Microsoft whiteboard. How do we start a whiteboard? So there's a few ways that you can go about this. I've got, let's, let's pick on Alex Wilbur here. So I've got his machine and the typical way that I would do a whiteboard is probably in a meeting. I, I probably wouldn't draw just completely by myself. So I would start a meeting. We're just gonna do a meet now. You could schedule a meeting and start a meeting, you know, like from your calendar. Um, but once we, we get this meeting up here, I'm going to do no audio. It's okay to show his, his little video preview. And we're gonna get into this meeting and he could add more people to it. I'm not gonna add anybody to it right now. You could add other participants. But in the course of a meeting, pretend there's like eight or nine people here. If we wanna start drawing together, we can do that. If everybody in the meeting is in the same organization, in the same tenant, in the same company, whatever terminology you're most familiar with. So I work for Cerner. Uh, everybody in the meeting needs to be a Cerner associate to see the whiteboard and work on the whiteboard. If there's external parties like a client, customer, um, a vendor that you're working with, another partner that's not in your tenant, they're not going to see the whiteboard, unfortunately. Instead, they'll see like a little um, box that says, hey, you know, there's whiteboarding happening, but you can't see it. That's one of the things that's coming later this year, according to the whiteboard roadmap. But we'll just assume everybody from Contoso is in here and Alex wants to start drawing because he wants to visually get his point across. So he would share, click the share button, you get the share tray up, then we're gonna hit whiteboard and that's gonna spin up a new whiteboard that is automatically shared with everybody who's been invited to this meeting. They have access to this shared canvas where they can draw together. And I noticed that the first thing here, this new loader bar, that's a little bit different. So that's how I kind of immediately know like, all right, we're gonna get the new experience here because we've got a horizontal loader. I want to say before it was like a circle loading thing. It's taking a little bit of time. So it's giving me a tip saying, hey, uh, control shift. And then it looked like square bracket. You can layer things uh, forward and back. But here we go. We're in the new experience. And now you can tell that it's new because we've got this giant picker over here to the left hand side where we can add. It used to have like notes and text up here in the top. Then they added shapes up here to the top where this uh, toolbar is but now we've got them over here along the side. So that's one way that you can start a whiteboard. Another thing you can do with a whiteboard is you can add it to a Microsoft Teams channel as well. So let's go over here. Um, actually, I'm gonna start from the web. Let's make a new whiteboard for our team and then add it to Microsoft Teams. 
So if we go into edge and go to office.com, whiteboard is also available as a web application. So it's, I think it's whiteboard.microsoft.com or you can sign in at office.com and you can pick it from the, uh, the app launcher. Uh, we call it the waffle. Um, this little waffle in the upper corner right here. Actually, let me turn on my, my mouse highlighter. There we go. This little waffle right here in the upper corner. Um, or if you click on all apps, it comes up with everything and we can scroll down a little bit. There's whiteboard. So it's going to take me to whiteboard.microsoft.com go there directly if you want to. And again, we're getting that new experience. There's that new loader bar. And here's that meeting with Alex Wilbur. So that, that whiteboard that got created, it's in my whiteboard account with all of my other whiteboards. So I can click on it here. I can um, open it up. I can change the name of it. I can delete it. I could add other people to it by opening it. But we're going to create a new whiteboard. <coughs> this loads up here. This I'm excited about, the ink toolbar with arrows. I want to show that off for sure. And we can rename it up here in the upper corner. So this is one of those new interface things. Okay, we'll call this um, our special team board. And hit enter probably. There we go. Now I've renamed that to our special team board. And I can share it by clicking on that little sharing icon. And I can generate a link where other people can get to that link if I want to. Um, I also can click on the settings right here in the upper corner and I can export this. Um, there's a little tour that we can go through and I can control like whether people can edit that or not. Um, that's, that's a feature in the team's meeting is I can just put it into like a presentation mode and then I'll prevent people from moving things around or drawing while I'm just trying to show something. But I've got this board here right now. We're going to go over here to retail general channel. We'll click the add to add a new tab up here at the top. And then we should have whiteboard available to us as a tab here. So there it is right there at the bottom of the recommended section. We click on whiteboard and then I do want to post about this. I want to let people know that, uh, that a new whiteboard is getting created. So we'll do, um, channel board if we want to and we can save that so this is going to create another new whiteboard so we're up to what three whiteboards now one created in a meeting one created in the web browser one created in um inside of teams and shared with everybody in this channel here so this is loading up and there we go that's called our channel board it's got the name there's that what i'm curious about is how would I add this whiteboard into my team? So if you remember, I copied a link to the whiteboard right here. Let's see if we can just add it as a website tab. And we'll do website. Um, we'll call it existing whiteboard. And we'll just paste that in and hit save. See if that loads up as well. That one might have like a permissions problem here. Okay, so it's it's basically saying, hey, you can view it on the web and then it's probably gonna load it up inside of here. Yeah, there it is. So that does still load up inside of um, Whiteboard, but I do have this uh, bar across the top. So it's loading it like in a website format. If I go back over here, I wanna say that app bar is not visible. So it's a little bit more optimized if you select the whiteboard option. Hey, we got some people watching from, from Yammer right now. So um, Timothy Williams is watching from, uh, from Malvern. We got somebody watching from World Headquarters, which is in, uh, in Kansas City. And then Stephanie's in San Diego, California. Stephanie, I thought I thought you were Northern California, not Southern California. Learn something new today. <clears throat> okay, and Daryl says uh, that 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 sidebar looks a lot better. I agree, man. Um, there's a lot to this, like reactions templates. I'm excited to dive into those things and see what it what it looks like here. 
So we've got these two things and you notice that it did not load that like office bar across the top. So it doesn't say Contoso and all of that. Um, now, what I'm curious about is what about permissions here? Is, is Megan, because Megan is in this channel, she will almost certainly be able to open the R channel board because it was created. So it was scoped to being shared. But the existing whiteboard, um, I don't know that she's going to be able to open that. So let's check that out and see, does it matter how, how you create the whiteboard? So we've got Megan. She's going to go into Teams as a different person than Alex. She's under Retail, General, and there's the two boards that Alex added. So we see that there's some new tabs. Our channel board, I would expect this is going to just work here. While we're waiting, Rob's asking, uh, you know, is this going to get closer to Miro? Um, from from what I can see, it's it's quite a bit closer. When you can add reactions, there's a proper shapes library now, um, a little bit more functionality than what we had, especially in whiteboard templates. I think that's um, going to be probably the most uh, the most powerful thing that we have. I wish I could see like how many people are watching on. Yammer. Let me click on Microsoft stream and see how many people are up there. Okay. So Megan, she was able to open up her, her channel board and that worked just fine. Now I'm curious, Megan has not been sent this other whiteboard directly, but I, Alex generated a link. So I wouldn't think that he should be able to, or need to add her explicitly to it, but we'll see what happens here. Oh, wow. There's 56 people watching on, uh, on Microsoft stream right now. So she gets the same thing. Do you want to view on the web? It's kind of going into like this legacy mode or this, you know, like compatibility mode right now. Oh, she's going to have to sign in. All right. Let me, let me grab her password here real quick. Got it saved in my, my password vault. So Megan, there's her account right there. And her password is right here. Boom. <clears throat> sure, stay signed in. And she wouldn't have to do this, you know, over and over again. This is just a one-time thing. The first time you load one of these tabs that goes out to something that's authenticated by Microsoft. Okay, so she's able to access it. And that's because I made a general, you know, um, whiteboard link that works for the people in Contoso uh, if they have access to that link. But because I added that link as a tab, there's no problem at all there. So those are three ways that you can get a whiteboard made. You can go to the website, whiteboard.microsoft.com. You can um, add a tab to your team and make a new whiteboard when you add a tab. Or you can do the most common thing, which is over here. And you can start a new whiteboard from a Teams meeting. I think that's probably the most common way that people start a whiteboard. Let me know in the comments, like, how do you start whiteboards? Is it more of an organic ad hoc thing? Or are you going to make a whiteboard? You're going to work on it together and then pull people into it. There's kind of two styles there. Um, I think for me, I usually would be in the course of a meeting, let's start whiteboarding. Either the purpose is to whiteboard or kind of organically back in the office, somebody would have stood up and started drawing on a whiteboard. I think in this case, it'd be like, all right, guys, let's let's just get this out visually. Uh, let's make a whiteboard. So you would click share and you would click on Microsoft whiteboard to create that whiteboard. It's automatically accessible by all the people in the meeting um, or who were invited to the meeting. So what we have here is this new UI, and then I'm going to jump into some of the new things in that UI. First thing here is 40 plus new templates. So there's a ton of templates in here. You can see that they're organized by um, category, and I want to check out what some of these look like. So over here in Whiteboard, I'm just going to close this other one. So we've got a nice big screen to deal with here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, 
over here, the create tab is open by default. If I want to just start inking, I can click on that and I can kind of toggle that on or off. If I want to get rid of the create bar on the side, then I can click that little plus button. So if I'm in the course of drawing something like here, I'm inking shapes. If I do a circle, there we go. You recognize it's a circle, even though I'm drawing with a mouse, I'm just using my mouse. It saw that it was a circle. If I want to add one of these elements, like a, a one note or a note card, like a, a post-it note, a text box, or like a grid of notes, that would be this little plus button over here on the left-hand side. So we're going to fly that open. And then we're going to go into templates here. And here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine categories of templates. So if we're brainstorming, inside of that one category, there's one, two, three, four. There's four different things here. You can start with a mood board, brain writing. I don't know what the heck brain writing is. Um, let me toggle this off. There we go. Build off each other's ideas and generate as many options as possible. Brainstorming is brainstorm new ideas with your team. That's not very <laughs> descriptive. An affinity diagram is organize ideas and data into clusters based on common themes. So let's just click on one of these and insert it. And okay, it's like, where do you want to put it in the board? I've got those three little circles. So I'm going to put it below that and click my mouse. Okay, and then there we've got that. And I, with my scroll wheel, I'm able to kind of scroll in on this and get a little bit bigger. I can click and grab because I've got like the little selection tool uh, picked. And then now we can start adding things to these note cards. So if I click on it, that selects it. If I hit the pin, then I think that I could start typing in here. So there we go. So I just clicked in it and started typing. I didn't necessarily have to click anything to go into an edit mode. So I can zoom way in on this. There's another note card. So you just click on it, start typing, it comes up. Um, or if you click on that, see how that cursor kind of like started bouncing? That definitely put it into edit mode. I can change the color of that note card here by, let me get up a little bit. I can change it to like pink or that's purple. I can click on this one and I can change it to like blue. So kind of basic stuff. Uh, and then there's that layering. So I can click on the little dot, dot, dot and I can send it to the back. So I wonder if I have this on top of the purple one, then I can click on this and I can sit, send it back. It sent it all the way to the back. So I think what would be nice, you probably want to bring this to the front instead. Um, because I guess this is a layer. This is a shape that got created. And if that was gone, then if I click on this and hit send to back. So it's it seems like it's gone. But really, if I delete that shape, it, it's there. It's just the lowest layer behind that little uh, template that got created. So there's one of the templates. It kind of creates like these, these little columns for me to use. And another tool that I see here is I have the lasso tool. So if I click on the lasso, I can select all this stuff. Everything is selected, hit backspace and boom, it's, it's all gone. So that is how we do that. Now let's see what some of these other templates are. Um, there's problem solving an assumption grid, which is organized uh, certain certainties and risk levels, cost benefit analysis, um, customer support statements, um, five whys, gap analysis, importance and feasibility, rose thorn bud, reflect on successes, challenges, and opportunities. That's interesting. That, that sounds like a, almost like, you know, an agile process um, thing, which I want to say retrospective, that's, there's some of your like uh, more agile process type things. And there's rose thorn bud is uh, one of those sailboat retrospective, whatever the heck that is. Start, stop, continue. So what should you start doing? What should you stop doing? What should you continue doing? Uh, what does team retrospective do? If I just click on that, plop it in there. And it looks like I would be able to add more templates than just this one. If we scroll in. So this has a team retrospective. What should we do more of, less of? 
keep doing, stop doing, and start doing. So it's a little bit more than just a uh, start, stop, continue. You have a couple more options there. And because I've selected all this stuff, I'm gonna hit the little trash can to delete that out of there. Mad, sad, glad. So there's, there's some different options there. We talked about problem solving. Here's design and research. So there's empathy, mapping, feedback grid, the Cano model, a mood board, simple journey map. Analyze how your customers feel and act throughout their entire journey with your product. So let's pop that in, see what that looks like. And it kind of shows you a little visual of like, what, what's the layout of this thing gonna be? What is it gonna look like? So we got some some new uh, comments over here on Yammer. Yeah, one one comment from Steve here. If I bring this up on screen, one negative thing is the export option. You only have PNG, which isn't great resolution. Yeah, that's a that's going to be a raster file rather than a vector file. Um, yeah, the app version allows you to export as an SVG. That's important because that being a vector, you have points and you have lines and you have like proper shapes and it can scale to whatever um, whatever size you need it to be if it's an SVG. So yeah, that is an advantage of the native app um, over this, uh, this web and Teams version. I wonder if that would ever be coming over to the Teams side because having an SVG is pretty helpful. So let's scroll in on this one. And this is stage one, two, three, four, actions, feelings, touch points, and opportunities. And it's kind of going to map it out. I wonder if I hit control A. No, that's. Yeah, so doing uh, command A doesn't select all. So that's one keyboard shortcut that I, I don't have. So we're going to click on that and delete it. which is kind of behind this little toolbar right here. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so that's design and research under strategy. There's assumption, cost benefit, some feature goals, goal setting. There's your SWOT analysis. So probably people use SWOT a whole lot. It would be kind of nice if I'm, as I'm going through this, it'd be kind of nice to like maybe star these, you know, and have like favorite uh, ones, you know, so like daily stand up if that's something that we do all the time. It would be kind of nice to have that have like a little favorite icon, right? So that I could generate um, that as a favorite from time to time. And there we go. There's your daily standup. Man, we should start actually using this. If anybody from my team is looking, uh, we we do um, standups, you know, uh, every day. And with this, you'd be able to say, what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? Do you have any blockers? And you can move the cards around. So really simple uh, scrum, basically. I kind of like that these templates, it tells you, a little bit of a guide like how this should be used as well and then this text i can of course change that if i want to to green black or gray i can change a little bit of the options there i don't think um if i select this text yeah i can't change like the font or anything like that uh quite yet um, or make something bold like if i did this and hit command b yeah it's not going to make it bold or anything like that we're getting there. At least we have uh, templates, which is pretty slick. So command A actually worked on that one. It might've just been like a lag with my virtual machine. Um, there's a Kanban thing, jobs that need to be done. Um, a project kickoff. I could see that being something that people use a lot. Team alignment, stuff like that. That's project planning. Retrospective, we looked at that. Oh, here's games. That's kind of cool. So there's choose your favorite. Start your meeting right with a fun activity to get to know your team. And then there's two truths, one lie. Get to know your team with an icebreaker. Let's try the choose your favorite. So what does it say we're supposed to do here? Choose your favorite is a great activity to get to know each other. Take one sticky note and write your favorite movie, TV show, song, sport, emoji. Get everyone to guess who wrote it. So this would be good now. But whenever we get collaborative precursors, that this game wouldn't work anymore, right? Because it would show who is actively like typing on each one of these things because it'd show like their name. So that that's not gonna be something uh, you know very useful in the future. 
Another thing I'm seeing that I'm missing here is in the in the Windows version, the native version, we actually have um, you can like things, uh, so you can kind of do voting on on note cards. I don't see that yet in the web version or this Microsoft Teams version. So that would be another thing that that I would look forward to is being able to like something would be really helpful. Now, what I did see is that if I go back over here to the create, let's get out of the templates, is I can do reactions. So rather than liking it, I could put a reaction on it and I could like do it like that if I want to. I don't think I can rotate this though to show like a thumbs down. Yeah, if I hold hold down things, I can't uh, I can't rotate it, but I can do a like or I can do, you know, a heart on something if I want, pop a heart on there pop a heart on that one. So that's a way that you can kind of show, you know, likes across the thing and, and vote for stuff. Or if something's approved, if you have more questions like, hey, we need a follow up on this uh, teal one, you can mark it as a follow up item if you want to with reactions. Um, going into more of these templates, we looked at the games, the workshops, you got brainstorming and a team alignment workshop. So there, there's a lot more stuff in here. So let's delete everything off of there and see what is this? brainstorm workshop so we're going to pop this in and it looks like it's a few templates put together into something called a workshop will has an interesting comment here he says uh, it seems like OneNote and whiteboard are kind of merging um it, it would be nice to have those templates in OneNote. yeah that would be kind of nice to have a little bit more like structure to OneNote, sometimes I don't know where to start when it comes to my own OneNote notebook and being able to have like some visual layouts would be kind of nice. Um, another thing that you might add to this is uh, Visio Online. The fact that we're getting Visio Online, that like um, Office 365 edition that's coming out to people who have existing Office 365 subscriptions. That's another example of being able to diagram and draw um, without any additional licensing. You don't need to upgrade to like Visio uh, Plan 1 or Plan 2 uh, here in the near future with some of the included Visio stuff that we're getting. So here's that brainstorm workshop template. If I scroll in here, it's kind of a lot of lag because I'm just, I'm doing a ton of stuff. And what you're looking at right now is actually a virtual machine. And I should have done this on Megan's because she has more than just uh, dual cores and uh, four gigs of RAM, I think is what I gave this machine. So I'm certainly pushing this to its limit here. And honestly, that's kind of a testament to how well this is working because this is a very underpowered machine and I'm able to like scroll and move around and, and do all that stuff just fine. So there's the brainstorming workshop. There's a little bit more structure to this, right? There's like, hey, for, the, for an hour and a half, you're gonna do um, two truths and one lie. I don't know why he'd spend an hour and a half on that. Surely not. That, that seems like a long time to do a, an icebreaker. Um, but you do like your name, you do two truths and a lie, and then people vote on which one is a lie um, by dragging it down into like that section or down into this section. They can kind of rearrange things. Um, and then moving down here, we've got step two is you're going to do a brain writing session. And you're gonna do that for 45 minutes, I guess. And then you're gonna do this one here for 45 minutes, gather ideas. So step three, surely. Okay, so step one, 15 minutes. This is kind of hard for you guys to see with a little screen, but um, it actually gives you like some time boxes, which is really cool. You can say, hey, for 15 minutes, we're gonna do this like little icebreaker. And then we're gonna move on here. And we're gonna do 45 minutes on, um, on this other thing, which is, if I drag this down, brain writing. And then we're gonna do 45 minutes on gathering ideas and then boom, our meeting is over at that point. And we spent an hour and a half total in the meeting. So that's kind of cool. That's like, you know, a, a meeting template more than just a whiteboard template, honestly. So I think that's pretty nice. This is lagging so bad. I think I'm gonna add Megan to this and let's see if it's a little bit better over on her machine because she has um i gave her eight cores of of cpus and uh, eight gigs of ram 
So let's go over here. Megan's being added to this meeting. <clears throat> and Megan's gonna join with her video on, cause why not? And we could make things, you know, a little bit easier if we weren't running like mini cam with a little linking video and all that type of stuff. I'm kind of pushing these VMs a little bit to their limit. Like if I go here to the task manager, we'll see how, how much are we pushing this machine running teams on it. <clears throat> so I'm using uh, 67, 62%, um, 16 gigs of RAM is what I gave it. I'm using 24% of my RAM. So, uh, on here, I would hope that hers is going to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more fluid, and she can go in here to templates now. If she goes into learning, there's brainstorming, compare and contrast. You get like a little Venn diagram. That's pretty cool. Um, KWL. What does that stand for? What you know, what you wonder about, and what you want to learn. So that's that's kind of interesting. Glows and grows. That is discuss and reflect on ways to glow and grow to identify strengths and areas to improve. There's Kanban, a lesson plan. That's that's kind of nice. Let's see what that one looks like. So we pop that into here. I'm going to maximize this to make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. So we'll scroll in on this guy. And there's the lesson title, the subject, who the teacher is. And so the teacher can kind of plan this stuff out a little bit early if they want to. And... Um, you know, have have some some things ready to go for the class. So that's pretty cool. So that is all of the templates. Are there any questions about templates out here from the from the chat? Um, does it have a timer? Ashley asks. Uh, I don't believe there's a timer yet for this. Um, hopefully, maybe they would add it to this like kind of you know, create bar over here on the side. But um, I didn't see an actual timer uh, built in at this time. I'm not sure if that's on publicly on a roadmap or something, but uh, I don't see a timer yet. Uh, ben Crozier asks, can the whiteboard app, there we go. Can the whiteboard app on an iPad use the Apple Pencil and live share with the Teams meeting for others to see in real time markings? Yes, Ben, it does. But um, there's there's a caveat to that. And I won't be able to show it because I don't have a Contoso iPad. But um, we've seen that these features, so these buttons right here and the new like ink arrows and stuff, that is coming next month. So in a month, yes, you'll be able to do the same stuff on the iPad as the meeting and you can see them draw in real time. Right now, though, if I were to go into the iPad, I would see the existing, like what whiteboard looked like yesterday. I would see that on the iPad and I could draw and do things uh, in whiteboard on the iPad. Um, and they would see it in the meeting live. They would see the drawing happening. Um, I have done that before with Cerner meetings. Uh, so great question. Let's check here a little bit more. Um, Steve said, I just found the answer to my question in Ian's blog post. Uh, the following features are live today available for uh, Windows and iOS next month. Yeah, so the question was, when is this getting pushed to the whiteboard app? The answer is next month for Windows and iOS. But today you can get it on whiteboard.microsoft.com, Android, and most importantly, inside of Teams meetings. So inside of Teams, you have these, these new whiz bang features. <clears throat> Uh, Will asks from YouTube, uh, can you make your own templates? It doesn't look like I can, Will. Um, that would be a nice thing. It was if I could make a template, like if I could select a section of the board right here, and then instead of deleting it, if I could make it a template, that would be really cool. Um, I think that would probably need a lot more workflow, right? You'd have to like maybe say what placeholders are there or something, or you'd have to create the template with sample text and then save it. Um, what you could do, Will, is you could make a whiteboard, like just an entire whiteboard with these templates, with your shapes and your notes, and then you could duplicate that, right? So if I like go back here to, well, I closed out of the browser. Um, 
If I were to go out, I wonder if I can open this on the web from here. Open an app. What is that going to do? Oh, that, that wants to open to the native app. Let's go to whiteboard.microsoft.com real quick. Okay. So like if I created this as a template, it looks like I can leave it or I can do that as our channel board. Um, I'm curious if there's a duplicate uh, somewhere in here. I thought I saw previously that like if you moused over something, you could like copy a whiteboard or something, but it doesn't look like I can't I can just export it. So no, not there. Do I have whiteboard installed on here? Um, I do not have whiteboard installed on this machine. So yeah, it, it looks like you can't uh, duplicate a whiteboard right now. You might be able to do it from the native application. I'm not quite sure. So that goes through the templates here. Um, next thing is uh, 12 new sticky notes and note grids. Um, I think this is a little bit ambitious. I think what it is is just these are sticky notes in 12 different colors. <laughs> like that's not 12 sticky notes, that's just 12 colors. Um, but note grids, this is something that only was available in the app. And now we have it available inside of Microsoft Teams. So if we go back over here and we go to notes, so I'm as Megan, Alex created this board, we're collaborating together. I'm gonna click on notes. There's those 12 different note cards or, or post-it notes. So I could add a note here, click on it. I could add a green note over here. And there's not so much structure to this. I can resize things and kind of show, you know, what they look like. Um, but if I want to have like a little bit of organization to this, let's go ahead and um, delete these. I can start with a note grid and this is like a nice like rows and columns layout. So if we do a yellow note grid, and click on that. And now I have like a, a two by three grid layout. So there's six note cards. And with this grid, I can say, add a title to this and I can add notes and it will add them to that structure. So I can be like, um, great ideas. And then we could start doing things like, it would be nice uh, if you could um, star your favorite templates. Like that would be really nice if we could do that. It'd be also nice if you could create your own templates. There we go. Um, some other things, it would be nice if there was a uh, timer object. So a timer object, that would be kind of a nice thing. And then if I want to, I can add notes to this grid. So I'm gonna scroll out a little bit and hit add note. And boom, it's added another note, another note to the bottom of that. Maybe I could start prioritizing these, right? By saying like, all right, um, I don't know if this one's on the roadmap or not. So, you know, we're going to like have that as a question, like purple. This one, let's let's just say that's on the roadmap. I don't know if it's on the roadmap, but say that it's like on its way. So it's, it's green. And like, no, they're never going to do starring templates. We would mark that as red. So now you've got like a multicolor grid because you started with yellow doesn't mean you have to stay with yellow and then we can click on these objects here to select them and I, it doesn't look like i can drag it around here so that's something that i've know that you can do on the windows app also with ios so you can click and you can rearrange these um, for some reason it's not letting me rearrange it and we may find as I get down the list of this blog post, there's a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. It may be some trick where you kind of like detach this and then you can move it out or something. But right now, um, I can't even right click on it. Uh, there's no layering to this. So that is our notes. Um, also in the app, one thing you can do is if you have another grid, so say we have like a green grid over here, is with 
the app, you're able to like click on a note and drag it to another page. Doesn't look like I can do that. So if I click on it, kind of hold it and drag. So no, can't rearrange notes right now. <laughs> so let's add that. It'd be nice if you could rearrange notes. <laughs> and it would be nice if you could move notes from one grid to another. We're kind of making our wish list here inside of Microsoft Whiteboard as we go. Um, so that's notes. The next one here is text. So if we click on this, this is just going to be a text box. And I clicked off of it already. So I'm going to do that again here. Here is some text. So there's a little text box. Um, I can change the color of the text if I want to make it purple. And then again, I can layer things. I can move it behind something or on top of something else. <clears throat> so uh, Daryl says that the new features are working well on the iPad in Chrome. So it looks like he's in his browser um, in Chrome but on an iPad and it's working there because the iPad, the iPad OS has a proper like desktop browser agent. So it sees it as like a desktop instead of seeing it as a tablet. Um, I think I answered this question, Morgan, but it looks like you can't sort a grid in here. Um, that would still be an app only thing. Um, hopefully it'll be coming over, but uh, not at this time. And then, yeah, could you sort by color, the number of likes, things like that. We did discover here that we can't like one of these like we can on the uh, native application, but you can kind of get around that by adding a reaction to it. So you could add a thumbs up. Now, the thing is it doesn't attach that to that note. It's not related to it. So you wouldn't be able to sort it by how many have the most thumbs up on it. It's basically putting the image on top of that uh, little note card. <clears throat> so that was text, that was note cards uh, and note grids. The other thing we could do is shapes. This was available, I think for the past like two months or so. It was up here in the drawing toolbar, at the top. They've moved it down to this create toolbar. You have shapes and we're able to do like a square, a circle, a triangle. There's different shapes here that you can add. So if I click on a rectangle, I can draw a rectangle right there and then I can, you know, resize it. It's not a square. I can make it, you know, long and skinny if I want to. And um, if I want to, I can add a square to that one and I can keep doing that. Doesn't look like I can like duplicate that shape. I wonder if I can copy and paste. No, it doesn't look like I can copy and paste that. Nope. So we'll add another square here and then we can start, you know, kind of mapping things out. So like, what if I, clicked on this and I want to like add some text to it. <clears throat> and this is my, you know, Cal digit PS three plus that's my doc. That's on my desk. So <clears throat> I get a lot of questions about like, you know, Hey, what's your desk set up? Like, what do you have on your desk? So I could create a diagram right here. Right. And I could have, I've got the Cal digit TS three plus I can add some shapes here if I want to. Um, <clears throat> and you got to add text to it manually. So I'm going to do, um, I don't know. I got like my, uh, ethernet. So my network connection at my desk is one of the first things that I have. I'm going to add that to this little card right here. Then I could add another text box here and say my, um, Elgato cam link 4k. That's my capture card, right? So I can click on that. I can drag that into this box. I need to make it a little bit smaller so it actually fits. And I can do things like that, but probably what's easier than doing a shape with text on it is start adding cards. So instead of that, I'm gonna add a note card to this and you know I can shrink it down if I want to. And you see that these alignments are happening. So I can like line it up perfectly straight with that one. And now a note card can have text on it. So I could add maybe up on the top of this, I'm gonna have, if I line this up here just right, let's try that again here. There we go. Line that up on the side, double click on it, and then I could put um, Sony A6400 camera. 
I can put like that camera is attached to a cam link, which is attached to my CalDigit TS3 Plus. Now, under shapes, you one of the shapes you have is you have an arrow. You could have an arrow with one one end on it or a double-sided arrow. So I could add one with an end. I'm gonna click on it here to add that and I could drag it here and kind of arrange it. You know, this isn't Visio, right? So it's not gonna like attach to that object, but now I've got a connection right there. One thing that I noticed in the blog post is I can draw these arrows with ink if I want to. So you see up here at the top, we've got a black pen, a red pen, a galaxy pen, a highlighter, eraser, lasso tool, and then um, that gets out of ink mode. The, the red pen has a little arrow next to it. That means that it's going to draw an arrow. If I draw a line and release my mouse, there's an arrow on the end of it automatically. So check that out. Now, let me lasso these and delete them. Let's delete these, get rid of that one. Ah, there we go. Get rid of that one. I wonder what this is. Oh, I can convert that to a shape if I want to. So it, it tried to recognize like, what is that shape? And it tried to make it into a shape. Um, now, what if I want a black arrow though? I want a black line. Let's click on the pin thickness. So I click on it another time. This is where I can change the color, but I can also say this has an arrow on the end of it. So where I released the mouse, there's an arrow on there, or this is a double-sided arrow. So let's say that this is a single arrow. I've got that out. Now I'm gonna drag this down and say, this is connected to my TS3 Plus. There you go, there's an arrow. And I just drew a line. The internet though, that's that's a two-way connection, right? I'm, I'm downloading stuff, I'm uploading stuff. So I'm gonna change that to a double-ended arrow. And now, if I click and draw an arrow right there, boom, I've got a double-ended arrow just like that. So that that's pretty slick that, um, I feel like that's a lot easier than like dragging an arrow from the shapes picker. You get it horizontal and then now you've got to like kind of stretch it over here, stretch it over there. Um, in my opinion, it's way easier to say, let's delete that, that line, way easier to say like this is connected to this. Boom, there's an arrow. And I did that with my mouse, you know, I didn't do that with, um, with having to, uh, to, you know, use a tablet or something like that. So that's shapes. That's also the, the arrow drawing tool. And if I want to not draw an arrow anymore, I just click the little like uh, no arrow sign. Click on that. Now it's just going to be a straight line, just like you would expect. Um, also, that was a new thing. Say I draw this circle. It detects that it's a circle. It smooths it out or whatever. I got to draw it a little bit better. There we go. So it detected that was a circle. It made it all pretty. I hit Command Z. If you're on a PC, you'd hit Control Z. It undid those last couple steps. So you do have like an undo option. You also can click the arrow up here to undo and you can redo something. So if I want that shape back, I can get rid of it or I can add it back just like that. Um, images, this is uh, the ability to import images inside of this. So um, I don't know if I have any pictures. Yeah, there's this picture of a drone shot from like Pexels. I can click on that from my computer. It looks like you don't you don't have like a SharePoint browser or a OneDrive browser. You would pick something off of your computer and you would add that to this whiteboard. And then now I could start marking this up with like the Galaxy Pen and say like, oh, this is really cool over here. You know, here's this bend. You know, we want to go check that place out. I can use a highlighter and I can say this area right here is where we're going to put the dam for this, uh, this river and totally ruin it. So that's, uh, that's adding images as well. And I think that basically covers everything in the create toolbar. So going back here, let's scroll through this list here. We've gone through reactions. So this is the ability to add these little stickers, if you will onto things, which is pretty cool. All these whiteboards look so much better than anything I've ever created. I'm just not that that good of a drawer, I guess. Um, 
inserting images. So yeah, like you insert the image, then you can basically annotate and mark up the image. That's pretty powerful, especially, you know, as a group and teams meeting, uh, you got your shapes here. Oh, this is something I didn't see is the ability to fill the shape. So if we go over here and we add like a tube of some sort, so there's a tube, it ha it's filled with that color. I can click on this and I can change the color of that tube. And then I can also put a different line on it, right? Or I could do no line, click the little no sign and there's no line. So we can edit our shapes a little bit more and kind of customize them that way. Um, the new inking tools, there's the rainbow. So you can have the galaxy and the rainbow uh, one. The thickness of the line, we talked about that. We talked about the arrows. I, I think this might be my favorite feature so far is the fact that you can draw arrows as just a regular line. I think that's a really cool thing. I wonder if other other things like Miro and stuff, if they do that. Somebody let me know in the chat if you've seen that. Um, here's a good question is, if I show this, question um are the arrows connected to the notes of the shape so you can move it around no morgan um it, it's not actually connected like it would be in visio where they're related to each other and then you could just drag this box and all the arrows like move with it or you know they elongate so um unfortunately no there's no like magnets or connectors on these shapes to connect an arrow to um that would be you know if, if further down the line if this kind of merges with like visio then maybe they would be able to connect. Um, that would be super cool. Um, inking straight lines. So if you hold down the shift key as you draw, that's gonna draw a straight line. So in the example here, they're drawing a straight line down, straight line across. Then they've got some dots. Okay, let's try doing that. So over here, we go back over to the ink. I'm in Alex, by the way and he's got his, his black marker. Hold down shift key. Let me turn on my, my keyboard shortcuts here to kind of show you guys what we're doing. Enable Keystroke Pro. So we're gonna hold down the shift key and draw, and then see I've got a straight line now. So I can draw that straight down. And it it's hard to see, but it kind of snapped when I got like kind of horizontal. See, it kind of stuck there for a second before it let me go beyond that, that kind of fulcrum. So we've got this here, and then I could click a few dots. So let's make this, let's make this line a little bit thicker. Make it like a six. And then now we've got a dot here, a dot here, dot here, and a dot here. And then we're gonna hold down shift again. We're gonna draw from this dot to this dot. And then we're gonna draw from this dot to this dot. So you notice that I'm not holding down shift. If I hold down shift, does it make it straight? No, it did not. So let's let's do that again. So I start drawing and it's going off, but it did not straighten it. it basically, when I hit shift, it made a new point and then that part was straight. But if I hold down shift, then start clicking around, I've got that point, then I've got that point, boom, there's my, my little fancy line graph that I just made. So that's, that's important to know is you can't hit shift while you're drawing, hit shift, then start drawing and you'll get a straight line. That's pretty slick. <clears throat> and then, yeah, you could like draw an arrow on the end of it if you wanted to. So like, yeah, if I did that, if I added another point right here, then I could say this one has an arrow and we're going to the moon. There we go. So I got a straight line with an arrow on the end of it by holding down shift and by having selected the arrow tip. That's rad, I like that. Um, ink to shape intelligence. So yeah, you can draw shapes and it recognizes those and kind of smooths them out. You see, we've got here, what was that? A, that's called a trapezoid, right? Or a rhombus. <laughs> I don't know what, what shape that is. I'm gonna have to ask my daughter. I'm sure she knows more than I do. So if I draw a triangle, Boom, there's my kind of crappy triangle. Here's whatever that shape was, a trapezoid. <laughs> it kind of rounded the edges over. That's not, not quite as fancy as I would hope. If I had a pin though, 
which if we have time, I've got a graphics tablet here. It's a little Wacom tablet. We might try playing with this a little bit. Um, the other thing I want to try, which is a little bit under Ben's, uh, what Ben's question was is an iPad. So I've got an iPad with a pencil. Um, what I want to check out though, is using this with sidecar in Mac OS so that this I'm drawing on my computer screen, basically see if that works out for me. All right. So that's inking to a shape. Here's those keyboard shortcuts. So alt W or alt W plus one switches to draw mode. Alt W two, that's pen number two, pen number three, eraser, arrow mode. Oh, there's arrow mode, alt A. Double arrow mode is alt shift A, and I can beautify something. So let's try these keyboard shortcuts. The first one I wanna check out is alt W. So I do not have an arrow on here. If I draw, boom. See how it says option right there? That's because I'm on a Mac keyboard. Alt is option. Don't don't worry about the key name. Um, but see that I'm doing Alt A. It's toggling on that little arrow. So I can boom. I can draw an arrow. Alt A. Don't draw an arrow. Alt Shift A. Draw a double arrow. So back to Alt A. Drawing a single arrow. Back to Alt A. I've toggled off the arrow. So there you go. That's your your arrow modes with Alt A or alt shift a like alt shift a three three keys um now that already is the coolest keyboard shortcuts i think that would make me a lot faster if you want to erase um alt z so you can do control z and you can get rid of these lines that you did oh wait i did control a uh control z control z see i'm getting rid of those arrows that i drew um, alt Z. Now I am in eraser mode. Control Z. No, that, no, that zooms. Oh, alt X. <laughs> There's an error. Um, alt X gives me my eraser, but for some reason it's not <laughs> erasing anything. Let's draw some, some text here. Oh, my cursor is off. Um, is that because I did the mouse thing? I got like kind of off. Oh boy. I got, I got my mouse off flipping between like RDP. Um, let's see when this refreshes, see if it lines back up for me. It looks like it's aligned now. No, it's like off of there. Let's stop presenting and start presenting again. Cause I kind of messed up my, my shifting. Let's do a whiteboard again. <clears throat> um, Ashley, I see your question. Uh, it would be nice if they had a polling option. Um, I agree. I, I don't know that a polling option is coming specifically, but one thing that they've announced that's coming to um, whiteboard overall is these things called fluid components. Um, and that's the ability to like take a collaborative component, whether it's like um, a table or um, an agenda follow-up list or something like that and paste that into a whiteboard. And then you could edit it in a Microsoft Teams channel or in a meeting and it would show up live in the whiteboard. Like the the content of that is live in both places. Um, what I don't know is, yeah, like maybe forms would be able to be one of those fluid components sometime down the line or something. Uh, but no, at this time you can't insert like a Microsoft form and uh, have a poll, like a proper poll that way. What you can do in this meeting is I could click on um, on add an app, which for some reason it's not letting me do. Um, let's see if Megan can do it. <laughs> no. Oh, because you can't add apps to ad hoc meetings. Basically, you could add the polls app and then you've got the whiteboard right here. The poll would come up in the middle. 
you know, I think I should probably show that because I think that's a, a pretty awesome feature to show. So let's end this meeting. Let's make a scheduled meeting real quick. Come on, teams, open up. I'm going to create this under Megan because she has a faster PC. Um, okay, so Megan's calendar. We're going to go in here and create a meeting that's scheduled so we can add apps to it. So new meeting. And this is called Holes Plus Whiteboard. Uh, invite Alex to it and send that off. <clears throat> okay, so now that's been created, we're gonna join that meeting and we're gonna invite Alex to it. So join her meeting here. Okay, and let's let's get Alex into this meeting. Let's drag him in, kicking and screaming. So request to join. Alex is gonna get a call here that he will accept because he's a team player. <clears throat> and we're gonna join this meeting here. And then Megan, because she's such a great planner, she would have like joined early, you know, or she would have gone to the meeting invite added the polls app and had some polls created, but um, we're gonna go add an app and we're gonna add the polls app here. It's called forms today, but we got a message center notification. It's gonna change to the word polls here pretty soon. And we're gonna add that. One advantage of this is that um, by decoupling that and having a meeting poll separate from the whiteboard is that um, you could use different solutions, you know, you use SurveyMonkey or Slido or something like that. Uh, but we're gonna do Microsoft here. So Microsoft Forms, the polls open up. She's gonna create a new poll here. <clears throat> and she's gonna do a multiple choice one. Um, how's it going? Great. I'm bored. Hopefully none of you guys are bored seeing some of these features. So. Megan has a poll, it's ready to go, but she hasn't launched it yet, it's still in draft status. Then she's going to go up here and she's gonna share a whiteboard. So we're gonna make a new whiteboard, get into a collaborative drawing space. And Alex, he sees the whiteboard is getting created. So he's, he's hands off and he sees the whiteboard getting made. Megan's got it over here. All right, so Megan's got a whiteboard. She goes into templates and she adds like uh, the two truths and one lie thing. And she clicks up here to inking and she's drawn a circle, some other stuff. While this is loading, I'm wondering if it's gonna queue up those, those clicks that I just did and draw a couple squiggly lines. Okay, it did, it caught up. That's impressive. Um, so she's drawing, Alex is over here watching. Whoa, Alex is zoomed in some reason, but you have independent zooming. So he can be zoomed in a little bit. She can be zoomed out. There's the whiteboard. Megan can now choose to launch this poll. And here's what it looks like for Alex. He's in the whiteboard and boom, a poll comes up front and center. And he can say, I'm doing great, submit. And then it shows like what the responses are. He's done with that poll and now he's back to whiteboarding. So that's a way that you can basically layer on polls on top of the Microsoft whiteboard. Megan is bored. We let her vote as well. And then boom, we're back to whiteboarding. But the poll is over here to the side um, all the time. And it, another nice thing of doing that is that you can export the results that way because it's part of the meeting itself. Um, you wouldn't have to wait for them to add polls to whiteboard and then hopefully have an export function in whiteboard. You know, more features down the line um, by having them in meetings and having that decoupled. Uh, you get the people's attention a little bit better that way too. Cause if it was a poll was an object, maybe you added the poll up here in the top corner. Well, maybe Alex is zoomed in over here. He wouldn't see that that poll existed, but because it was a meeting poll and you launched it, he sees it front and center in the middle of his screen right here. 
um, no matter where he is on the whiteboard. So trying to justify uh, why Microsoft doesn't have that, <laughs> if you didn't notice. Um, okay, so that's polling functionality. We got the eraser. This is wrong. So Ian, if you're watching, I know that you liked my tweet on Twitter saying that I was doing the, a live stream. You got a typo, bro. It's Alt X um, is the eraser, not Alt Z. So um, that's something that we learned. Uh, the highlighter is Alt H. Now, what's cool about this before I move on from inking is I could do a uh, stream deck icons for this, right? So hopefully you guys know what the stream deck is. I'm gonna open up the stream deck. The stream deck is this physical box. The cord is not long enough for me to grab it. I've got a box with 32 buttons that light up. They're 32 little screens and those buttons can do actions. Like one of these actions here, this little mouse that toggles my little cursor highlighter on for you. Um, so I could create an action right here and I could have it be like an eraser or a highlighter or switching to an arrow. So under system, I could say, I want to do a hot key right here. And I want that hot key to be, um, what was it? It was alt a. So alt a is my arrow. So I can do arrow. And then right here I could add another hot key and I could do shift alt a. And I could call that double arrow. And then, you know, I could click on this and I could add a custom key to this. So I don't know if I'm gonna have like an arrow uh, icon in my little library here, but Elgato has like this really cool icon library if you haven't updated your Elgato stuff. So if I search for the word arrow, okay, some stuff did come up. So I can do like, I want an arrow. I want a double arrow or whatever. We'll just pretend that that's a, <laughs> a different icon um, like this guy. So I've got these little custom buttons and now I can see that button right there. If I go over here and I'm drawing, I'm drawing a line, I'm drawing a line. If I tap the arrow, then it sends that, that keyboard shortcut over there so that it toggled it and now I've got I have to zoom in here on that. I've got that little arrow on there. So you could kind of create a physical, theoretically, um, where'd my stream deck go? Stream deck. Um, you could kind of create, theoretically, a little toolbar, physical toolbar to match these right here. So like a little pen icon, a little highlighter icon, and then you could like click buttons, right? to switch between the tools here. So that would be that would be super cool and another reason to have a stream deck. If you haven't looked at these stream decks, this is very, very valuable um, for all kinds of stuff. I've got one for my lighting, annotating my screen. I've got sound effects, Spotify playback, all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, you could create like physical buttons there and then man, you could just click away off screen and you could be uh, changing tools that way. So that is keyboard shortcuts and a little bit of like adding physical control to your keyboard shortcuts. I'm curious also, this Wacom tablet, you're not gonna be able to see this probably, but there's buttons right here. I wonder if I could map those buttons to like do those keyboard shortcuts or not. That would be kind of slick. Um, scrolling down a little bit more, we can format the background. This is something that we had in the app and I use this all the time on the iPad app specifically because I like grid paper. So now, Inside of this, I'm just gonna clear this entire whiteboard. I'm just gonna delete everything off of it. Maybe, there it is, okay, it went away. So we're gonna click on the little gear here and then I can format the background. So right here, you click on the gear in the upper corner, format background, and then I can choose like dot grid paper and I could make it like pink if I want to. And then if I scroll in a little bit, I've got some nice dot paper that now you could, you know, play lines with somebody if you wanted to. Like if I click off of here, get rid of that little arrow. And then again, hold shift. I could draw right here. And then Megan 
over here, she's got, she zooms in. I'm zooming in. She goes down and she's red, right? Um, she's not going to do an arrow. She could, you know, do that one. And then, you know, honestly, I don't know how to play lines. So I am like just making this up. But yeah, so like you could play back and forth, you know, right? Or you could do like this and you could make like a little tic-tac-toe board, right? And then over here, uh, Megan could then draw, you know, an X. And then over on this side, Alex could draw a circle, you know, in his red pen. And you can, you know, play tic-tac-toe that way. And you could line things up with a grid is uh, basically what I'm getting at. So you can change the color, you can change the grid lines, you can make it a rule uh, if you want to. I personally like dot paper. Um, my field notes, that's what I buy is like the dot field notes. Um, we have object alignment. There's rotation snapping. As you rotate an object, you watch it snap at 45. Okay, how do we rotate? That's my, that's my question there. Because... I've gone in here and I've got notes, right? We're gonna add a note card here. We're gonna add a note card here. I'll zoom in a little bit or zoom out rather. And I can line these up, right? See those little like dotted lines? They showed up and I'm aligned. If I make this a little bit smaller, see so you can align in the center like that. You could center that box on top of that box and then now you could make this like blue. You know, then you've got some some stuff. The question is, how do you rotate that? Oh, okay. So I could make it bigger or smaller, right? But if you notice, if I got a little bit outside of that, now I've got a rotation and it's going to snap at 45 degrees and then again at 90 degrees. Right there, it snapped. And then it, it snapped again right there at 45. So... It's hard to say this, but like it's pausing just a little bit as I push past that that threshold. Okay, so you can rotate stuff. Can you rotate shapes? Let's go over here, get out of notes, add a shape. Add this big honking arrow here. And again, yeah, I could rotate that. So I was wrong. Um, it, in the beginning of the video, I was talking about not being able to rotate. Um, it looks like you can. Can I do it with a reaction? You know, maybe I don't want a thumbs up. Yay, that's a great job. Okay, so that's the key. Go a little bit further than the grabber handle, and now you can rotate it and do a thumbs down. Boom. Okay, cool. So, the mystery solved. We can rotate things. Now, I can only do a smiley face. Apparently, I can't do a sad face but I could do an upside down smiley, <laughs> smiley face. So, I mean, that's something. Um, okay, cool. So we figured out rotating. Oh, hey, Steven's on. Hey, Steven, good to see you. Hopefully, uh, um, hopefully things are going good for you. I, I know, okay, so everybody who's watching, look up Steven on, um, on here. I, th I think his channel, correct me if I'm wrong, dude, but... It's uh, what's new in Microsoft Teams, I think, uh, is is his channel name. Go subscribe to it because he's going to have, I know he's probably going to make a video that's way more well thought out than what I'm doing right now on Whiteboard. His stuff is really, really good, really valuable. Awesome. Hey, Ian is, is on here. So thanks for joining, Ian. I just thought we would check out what what's in here and see if we can kind of figure it out on our own but I appreciate you coming out. Yeah. Cool use of stream deck. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's pretty cool. It, you know, it'd be nice, Ian, if you're, if you're watching still, uh, it'd be cool to integrate that in with the touch bar on the Mac, right? A Mac touch bar. If you could like click between the pins that that's probably, that's like very wishful thinking. Um, cause we like just got touch bar support for teams controls, you know, your meeting controls, but, uh, shortcuts would be pretty rad. All right. So yeah, that's it. So it's what's new in Microsoft Teams. Um, look up Steven's channel because it's really, really good. Highly recommended. Um, okay. Back over to the blog. What else we got? So we learned about snapping and rotating. That's really good. 
uh, bring to front, front, bring to back. So yes, you can do, um, you could do that by clicking those little dot, dot, dots and doing front or back. So it's just front or back. If there's more than two layers, you might end up like covering it up all the way. That's what something we learned. There we go. And then, um, <clears throat> so they're going to be adding consumer accounts. That's pretty nice. So if you're somebody who uh, wants to like whiteboard for home, you don't want to store it with your company's account. Um, it looks like the Microsoft consumer accounts are coming. Uh, inserting documents. These are all things that are coming um, next month. So this is under the category of coming next month. Next month will also have the ability to organize documents. So you'll be able to add a PowerPoint presentation and annotate those slides and iterate together. So you can see here that she imported a slide deck, which put it in a grid. And then now you're zooming in on the slide, you're marking it up. You know, hey, we should do this. We should really emphasize that part. Um, and then you can take that whiteboard with those non-destructive annotations, go make those changes to PowerPoint. So um, that's a pretty visual way of laying out rather than using SharePoint comments, which are great, but you could, you know, like, like be a little bit more visual if you're like a graphic design team or something, building slide design. Um, now we're in coming later this year. So later this year, one of the biggest things is this OneDrive for Business. Um, this is what's going to unlock, right? The ability to do that, like guest collaboration where across companies, because it needs to be stored in OneDrive or it needs to be share, stored realistically on SharePoint online architecture so that it can be shared properly and shared with the right compliance and, um, and retentions and things like that. So the move to OneDrive for business, it, it'll probably be helpful because it'll organize it with your other files, you know, as like your video drawings, your PowerPoints, other things. But what's more important is behind the scenes, that's going to provide that like um, that compliance and and uh, security features so that you could share things externally down the line. Uh, collaborative cursors. This is something that's coming later on this year. As you see here, this is where you actually see the person's name while they're drawing and you can see where people are. This is that thing I'm, I'm wondering, Ian, if you're watching is Will you be able to turn that on or off? Because like over here, I can turn on the settings. I can say, don't allow others to participate. And then now I can draw, Megan can draw because she created this. Um, but uh, Alex, his toolbar went away because he's not allowed to ink anymore. So I'd wonder like, could you turn collaborative cursors on and off maybe over here with a switch? Because otherwise, that game with two truths and a lie or the uh, pick your favorite where people are adding their favorite movie and stuff and you're trying to figure out who wrote what. Well, if you have collaborative cursors turned on that, that ruins the game, right? So it'd be interesting if, if those are going to be a toggleable experience or not. Uh, collaboration roster. So this shows you who's collaborating. Um, I would imagine. Yeah. And who made the last edit, uh, I would imagine probably that'd be as a roster. It might be like a list of people who, who have been in this board um, sharing. So the sharing control, again, it's the same dialogue that you're going to see in office online and other experiences. That's that OneDrive for business. If they get it to OneDrive, if they get it to SharePoint, then the share button can be that dialogue. So it matches everything else. Um, once that moves, that's going to be kind of one of those building blocks, right? <clears throat> And yeah, you'll be able to share uh, specific people in your organization. Hopefully sharing externally would be something that would come along with that as well. If it's just a file in SharePoint, I wouldn't see why not. Uh, the laser pointer, this would be really nice. I really, I use the laser pointer a lot in um, PowerPoint Live. So whenever you share slides and you're drawing with, I'm circling things and then like the laser pointer fades away, kind of has a tail on it, like a comet. Um, it looks like the exact same thing as it's drawing. See how it's kind of got like a trail to it. Wait till this loops around again. So there it is. The little trail goes up there. She starts drawing this way. Um, that, that looks like the exact same laser pointer as uh, PowerPoint live. And then search and discovery again, by storing it in the right place, OneDrive for business, you'll be able to open it up to, uh, Microsoft search. Whenever you search for, 
drawings. You'll find your Visio drawings. You'll find your, your whiteboards, hopefully. Um, I wonder how deep that search integration would be if it recognizes the text and things like that, maybe. And then the recycle bin. Another benefit of OneDrive for Business is if you delete a whiteboard, it will be in your recycle bin with the rest of your files for OneDrive. So uh, those are things coming later this year. I want to show you guys how to get to the roadmap to track this stuff. I get questions all the time and usually my first place is to go to the roadmap to see what's out there publicly um, to share with people. So roadmap.microsoft.com and there's filters right here along the side. This is my favorite part about the roadmap is I can filter by like what cloud we stuff, but also product. I wonder if whiteboard is in here. I know that like Yammer and Microsoft Teams uh, whiteboard is so you could filter by whiteboard like that. Then you could also filter by cloud instance. So we, my company, we're, we're not GCC, we're not Germany or DOE, we're worldwide. That's just general availability. So select that. Now you're looking at whiteboard just for the dates that are non-government. Um, and then you can do new or updated. So you can even filter by like what's changed in the past week. But right here, we've got 16 updates on the roadmap for whiteboard specifically. And if you look at like what's launched, we can click on that. It filters um, the app tab in Teams. Um, this additional content types, that's your stickers, note grids, things like that. Um, inking improvements, um, that's something that came out today. It's still September technically. That launched today. And then some of the stuff that's rolling out, if we select that, there's per user licensing. It doesn't matter to anybody on the server side that's watching this. We license everybody. Um, and then at that external access and Teams meetings, this is on the roadmap. It is set for October and it will only, you'll have to require OneDrive for business. So there we go. I guessed right. Um, once it moves to OneDrive, that enables the capability to add external access because that's, that's the platform for sharing things externally. Um, migrating your previous created board. So migrating those um, into European data centers. This is specific to Europe. Locking content. So this is where um, you'd be able to prevent movement of something. So if you've got like a bunch of shapes laid out, you could select those shapes and lock them in place so somebody doesn't mess it up. The uh, attribution, this is going to be that collaborative cursors right? Um, that's December, December. These to me look like placeholders. Um, hopefully they don't move, but don't, don't cry too bad if they do get moved. Cause that's kind of far out there. Um, additional facilitation features. It says October. Um, I don't see anything specific on here. Um, product group, if you're watching a facilitation feature could be the timer. <laughs> if you wanted to add a timer there, that would help people facilitate conversations, but we don't see anything specific to what that is. I would imagine that's going to be another blog post in the future to say, you know, here's the list of what we consider facilitation features. Um, OneDrive again, that's coming next month. Uh, whiteboard for Android. That's, I mean, available now, right? Cause they said that that launched, um, web templates it says in development, that's going to move to launched here pretty soon. User experience. There's that user refresh. That's what came out today. Um, iOS, that's going to be next month. And then going next, the Windows app, again, that's going to be next month, the, the revamp to include these new features. So if you're one of those people that wants to monitor this, go to roadmap.microsoft.com. You can select these filters and then you can even click on here and I'm going to paste this into roadmap paste that into YouTube. And then I'm also going to paste this into Yammer. So there you go. There is a link to the roadmap specifically filtered for whiteboard for you. So that's some of the, the features that are coming soon. All right, going through some of these things. Um, yeah, Steven points out like, yeah, this could be a compliance nightmare if there's like you know, the annotations, if it doesn't read those, I'm curious about this, like search and discoverability. If, um, how deep is that going to be? Is it going to read a handwritten text only imported images? Will it scan and do, um, OCR, you know, uh, optical character recognition, who knows? 
Um, Will says, uh, yeah, down the road, this could be like tabletop simulator. You create like learning games. Yeah. So from a learning perspective, yeah, you could like import a game board, you know, that you like custom make or something. And then you could like, you know, maybe put like your little avatars as shapes or you could import little images as the people you could. Yeah. You could even do like a virtual game board game if you wanted to. That would be super cool. Okay. And then there's that, that roadmap again, check the chat and you'll see that, that link out there to the roadmap. Let's check Yammer and see who's watching over there. And then I think we'll wrap this thing up. It's uh it's two 30. We've been going for an hour and a half and we've, we've learned a lot. You know, we've seen all the features. We figured out how to rotate, talked about keyboard shortcuts, uh, maybe stream deck icons. If you have a stream deck, some kind of tips and tricks there. So there's, um, Ashley says, does the text auto size to the shape of your note? Um, Ashley, it does not look like it auto shape. Uh, it does not look like the text gets bigger or smaller. Um, Ashley points out that like, Hey, uh, Miro does that. It will auto be bigger. And as you type more, it'll shrink down the shape automatically. Um, some changes being pushed. Browser base is all good, but I need the app to be updated. Yeah. So he, uh, Steve found his own answer, but that, that was 52 minutes ago. So I don't see any new questions on here. I don't see any new questions on YouTube. So, um, with that, turn, turn off my, my thing. Um, you know, I, I think this is a really exciting update. It's one of those things that like we get like these little piecemeal updates, like, uh, from teams usually where it's like this one little thing or this other little thing, having everything bundled up like this and then dropped today is really exciting. I mean, it, it's, it's so exciting that I was like, I, I, to digest this, it might be nice for me just to go live and let's just digest it together because it's just so big and so feature packed. Um, I think it's awesome. I'm, I'm pretty pumped about this because in the past, to, to be honest, I've, I've had, you know, um, frustrations with whiteboard and things getting delayed, things not being, you know, quite there from a feature standpoint. So to see a big release like this all together, I'm hopeful that it means that, you know, investment is being made in the whiteboard application. Maybe, you know, hopefully Microsoft is seeing some of the other players out there like Miro and Mural and, um, and other things to where, you know, th they need to catch up to some of those features, right. For the already, done investment that the companies have made in office 365 you know um so hopefully that that signals a, a renewed investment and focus on on whiteboard in particular but um we'll keep tracking this stuff again uh subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't already um and i'll we'll do more stuff like this i've got in a couple weeks uh we'll do another live stream again with andy honeycutt uh probably at the end like probably I think what we say the 22nd of October uh, we're hoping to talk about breakout rooms and uh, the, some of the new improvements to breakout rooms since it launched last December. So subscribe so you see that subscribe. So you see little tip videos come out. Um, also go check out uh, Steven at what's new in Microsoft teams and subscribe to his channel as well. And also Daryl, I noticed he, he was in the chat early on. He's probably moved on to the rest of his day but another friend to highlight modern workplace change, uh, go, go subscribe to Daryl Webster's channel as well. Cause he throws really great tips out there from, you know, a, uh, a workflow standpoint, you know, we've got this problem. We're going to solve it with that tool. Uh, he, he does a great job of explaining that stuff as well. So thanks again for watching and, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.